Hey everyone, Cynix here, and today we're going to be traveling back inside the old video sketchbook. So this is going to be some very comfort zone oriented art. And you can see here, I just started recording, but I had no idea what I was going to make. I'm just exploring with mechanical designs because I just wanted to do something that represented what I normally do for fun. So that's kind of what video sketchbook is good for. But anyway, as you can see, I'm just trying to find a cool mechanical shape and then maybe I can render it into an actual illustration. And a lot of times, I think I mentioned, but with these mechanical designs, I like to establish a good base or a good leg structure, just something that feels like it has a little bit of pent up energy, but it also needs to be weighted and balanced to a certain degree. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely realistic. I always like to make my legs and joints really thin, but nonetheless, it needs to feel some weight and balance, and that's what's gonna give us a believable mech design. So once you've got good legs and like a good nice frame, you can really do whatever you want as far as torsos and arms and anything that you might wanna add to the top of it. I think I have a good little silhouette going here, so I'm just gonna do what I normally do and block out some paneling areas with white. So this is like stage two of any of my comfort zone style designs, is I make the silhouette, then I have fun doing a secondary design, which is the paneling design. And you combine the silhouette with the paneling design and bingo, that is a piece of art. So anyway, I think this is actually a really good time to talk about comfort zones because it's definitely a topic that has a lot of mixed feelings for me and I really don't have any answers to share with you. But let me break down what the actual controversy, controversy is. Um, when it comes to comfort zones, I was always told from really great artists that you need to avoid sticking to your comfort zone as much as, po as much as possible because that's the only way you're gonna really improve. So you try to do stuff that's constantly out of your comfort zone, that's not doing the same thing over and over again, and that's how you're gonna become a good artist. But there is a backlash to that or a kind of side thing that I didn't really realize as much, but that is you're not gonna have the same strong portfolio that you would have if you just always did the same kind of comfort zone pieces. And in fact, you'll see a lot of probably your favorite artists, a lot of my favorite artists, they have very distinct comfort zones that they just stick to completely. They don't jump around trying all these new things. They just build a strong portfolio of piece after piece. And they're all very similar in how they render them. They're all very similar in the structure of everything. And that is just a good way to be an artist. That is you, that's your signature. You build your comfort zone and then you work in it and you don't really try to do a lot of different things all the time. So I've been kind of thinking about that a lot. Maybe the goal to being a good artist isn't constantly changing and jumping outside your comfort zone. At least, I don't know, maybe there is a point where you need to go into a comfort zone after you've already learned a lot about art. So that's been on my mind a lot. You know, maybe I should just be drawing mechs and things and girls and not worrying so much about always doing new things. But then again, maybe trying new things is my own comfort zone. So I'm really saying the word comfort zone a lot, but it's uh, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's something that's always on my mind. In fact, so much so that I actually made it my new year's resolution this year. Uh, to do more artwork that was in my comfort zone because it looked like all the previous years, especially because I do so much for YouTube videos a lot of times, uh, that I'm always just trying to learn something new or experiment with a new technique or a new style or, you know, just some new topic that I want to really get into. Um, so I thought it would be good to do just more classic stuff. So mechanical, robots, girls, uh, simple nature -y backgrounds, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but for now, we're just gonna make a quick fun video. So you can see here, I've made a very autumnal looking background, a lot of oranges, a very dull sky, a nice kind of tan khaki colored floor. And I just shrunk the whole thing down because at first I had a nice widescreen composition, which I usually do for every single YouTube video. It's always a widescreen composition because I wanna fill the whole page. 
But this time I thought, you know, just having these structures right in the middle, it looked a bit weird. So I'm actually shrinking it down and doing that. And the other thing I wanted to do with my quick little background color pass was give this guy a nice shadow. So this has already established, I would say, all of the information I need to render him out. You can see how I have that shadow there. And I did that like as a graphical element. Sometimes you can decide stuff like that, like your shadow as a graphical element. And then you don't have to worry so much about picking your lighting um, on the actual mech because it's already been decided based on its shadows graphical properties. So just doing fun stuff like that can help out a lot. But this is where I'm gonna go off the rails just a little bit because unlike sticking with my comfort zone idea, which apparently I'm completely incapable of doing two things the exact same way, I thought it would be fun to try doing a value map for the mech instead of just painting it like I normally would. So here I made a colorized layer on top and just set it to black. And that just gives you a nice grayscale version of everything underneath it. So despite already doing the background and color, I'm just gonna make it black and white for the sake of getting a nice value map on this actual mechanical element here. I guess I'll just call him the mech, on this mech here in the foreground. So now I'm just playing with it a lot. And the other nice thing about having this uh, kind of shortened width on my illustration is you can actually see a couple of the windows. You can see my layer window, which I normally don't use, but I'm using it on this piece. And you can see the navigator window, which just lets me zoom in and out. And it's really not important as far as using it, but I like to have the navigator there just so I can look at the really tiny version of my image because that's actually what I'm focusing on when I check the values and see if it looks right. I'm not looking at the big picture. I'm looking at that little one, um, which shows me the big picture. I'm sorry, that was silly. Uh, but yeah, that's where I can really take a step back and see if the values work as a whole illustration. So I thought the mech was way too dark, so I really lowered the contrast and lightened him up a bit. And now when I look at that little tiny thumbnail, it looks okay. It feels, he feels a bit more grounded in the actual setting I've put him in. So there's a lot of experimenting here. I was trying to get some bounced light in my grayscales. So you can see me doing that. I was trying to decide if I wanted to cast any shadows on things and just doing a lot of stuff and basing it all on like graphical ideas because you still have some wiggle room. Uh, so you can just focus on what looks cool instead of being super realistic and trying to get everything 100% accurate. So anyway, there's just a lot of noodling around with this grayscale because once again, it's not how I do things. A lot of people actually like to work in grayscale first and then add color, uh, but I actually find it kind of limiting because if you establish your grayscale, it actually limits the colors that you can use once you try to add colors. And I don't like being limited at all in crazy colors because that's really where you have fun is adding a lot of good colors. So anyway, here you can see what I'm talking about. You can see how I quickly tried a red and that just won't work at all because the value map I did was really too light to have a good, a good strong red. I don't know what I was gonna say, a good bloody brutal red. Um, and also it doesn't work for yellow because the yellow would not look good either. It would be too darkish. But what you can do with this mid-tone I picked is probably a blue or a purple tone, which is what I had to go with. But I don't really like this purple. Blue is even worse, but purple does not go with the background that well. Uh, but nonetheless, because of the value map, the values will be good with this purple. Uh, it just won't look good right now. So I got to figure out how to edit that around a little bit and I'll keep adjusting it to try to figure that out because I don't know, I, I'm glad I don't do stuff with a value map first because it would just drive me nuts like trying to figure out the colors and have the values actually stay the same. Uh, but anyway, you can see I made it a more shrimpy looking color. I guess that's that's what it is, salmon-y. I don't wanna say salmon-y, I would say shrimpy. That looks like kind of shrimpish color that very pinkish, uh, pinkish red, pinkish purple color. 
Um, and I think that's gonna be the keeper. That's the color I'm going with. So it, it's definitely a unique looking mech design um, in terms of color. It's definitely a color I wouldn't have chosen, uh, but it's one of those happy accidents where the values I picked just kind of had to dictate this color. I had nothing else to do with it. So I'm rendering out this girl here. And by the way, I completely forgot to mention, I didn't even show myself drawing that girl. Uh, I just kind of threw her in in between recordings because I wasn't sure if I wanted to have a character there, but I thought it looked okay. So I, I threw her in, did the same method method of making a grayscale version and then coloring her in. And I gave her a little bit of t-shirts, but once again, I don't know, the colors aren't super great. And I'm playing around with them a lot to try to make everything look like it exists in the same world. Because that, that's a huge problem when it, you're doing stuff in different methods, is things don't look like they mesh well. So that's a good reason to avoid using layers. It's a good reason to avoid doing a lot of things. You always want your art to feel like it all came from the same method. And that will make it really cohesive as an illustration. But anyway, I think that's about it for this whole process. You can see here, I'm just kind of refining details. And there is one last thing that I completely didn't mention. And that is, I kind of gave him a little bit of teeth in the mech. You can see them right around his belly area now that I'm zoomed in. Uh, it's kind of this idea of teeth. Um, and that's just something I've been throwing in on all of my art lately is the idea of teeth. And I don't know why it's just amusing to me. Uh, but here's a finished illustration. And I also did a little After Effects thing, which you can see here. Ooh, there's there's leaves falling and it's kind of 3D. And uh, yeah, it wasn't that great. But I did make a good 3DS image for this one. I actually think it came out really good. So if you have a 3DS, go get it out and scan this because I think it's one of the best ones yet. But anyway, I guess that's a bit it, about it. Sorry for being a mush mouth. But thank you guys for watching and I'll be back shortly with more interesting stuff and hopefully a lot more comfort zone fun videos in the future.